Good morning. Welcome back to First Look Asia. It's our first health matters for this new year. It is, yes. Uh, atopic dermatitis is what we're talking about. It's also better known as eczema, an itchy skin disorder which appears as a red uh, scaly rash. It affects 2 to 5 percent of young children worldwide and 1 in 5 mm. people in Singapore have it which includes 20% of school-going children. Well, eczema can, of course, occur at any age, but today we're going to focus on young children, and we have with us Dr. Tio Wan Lin. She is a specialist in dermatology and consultant at Raffles Skin and Aesthetics. Uh, Happy New Year, Doctor. Thanks for joining Happy us New today. Year. Good morning. First up, for parents with babies, uh, what signs should they be looking out for for the onset of eczema? Well, eczema typically starts as an itchy, dry skin condition in the first year of life or later, and parents may notice red, scaly patches occurring on areas such as the scalp, on the face, especially the cheeks, um, the body, the arms and the legs, the elbows and the knees are common areas. Um, parents may also notice that their child is rubbing themselves against bedding um, to relieve themselves of the itch and this can be very severe, it will disturb sleep at night. Is this related to nappy rash at all? Um, a nappy rash is separate because um, there are certain factors such as the diaper being in constant contact with skin and um, if there is persistent soilage due to uh, feces or urinary um, substances, then uh, you know, it can increase the chances of getting skin irritation as well. Okay. Mm. So if uh, the parents have eczema, will the child get it for sure? Is it something that's heredit hereditary? Well, research so far actually links uh, genes to eczema um, and uh, if one or both parents have eczema, asthma or allergic rhinitis, the child is also more likely to develop any one of these three. Okay, so what generally causes eczema in babies and in uh, younger children as well? Eczema is uh, primarily due to a defect in the skin barrier which is genetically determined. Uh, I use the brick and mortar model to explain this to parents if you imagine the skin as a brick wall. And um, in eczema what happens is that the bricks are crumbling and the mortar is deficient. As a result there is increased water loss to the environment um, and also an increased chance for allergens in the environment to enter and trigger off a flare. Okay. Now, would this be uh, similar reasons why older children have it too? The triggers for eczema are similar across the age groups and um, environmental factors such as extremes of weather, very hot, very cold weather, changes in humidity, the presence of pollen, mold, uh, pet fur in the environment, these can all trigger off flares of eczema. In addition, if you use very strong soaps or detergents, uh, this can strip the skin of moisture and trigger off a flare up as well. What about food and allergies, doctor? Are these always linked? Foods do not cause eczema, mm. however, there are some studies which seem to suggest that younger children, especially uh, below the age of four, may find that uh, food allergy worsens eczema. It is important to discuss this with your child's dermatologist before excluding foods from your child's diet because um, overall children need a balanced diet for nutrition. Okay, so it doesn't cause eczema but certain foods can aggravate the eczema, um, for example? Mm -hmm. So in children with established food allergies, allergies that is so if you okay. don't have a food allergy the food it will not worsen your okay. eczema uh, what are the common foods then well uh, peanuts soy milk these uh, if you are truly allergic to it then uh, it can trigger off a flare in, ex okay. uh, in somebody with existing eczema yeah. what what are some of the main things you would tell a child not to do if they have eczema you know scratching is obviously it, it's it's an itch you want to scratch all the time yeah. and it's, it's hard to prevent it so what do you tell a child who's dying to scratch well, to be honest, it's very hard to tell someone who's feeling itchy not to scratch. Uh, I have some tips for my patients. For example, I tell them to pat their skin instead of uh, rubbing or scratching it. In addition, they can put moisturizer instead of scratching. Um, if they refrigerate their creams, the cooling sensation can help oh, yes. to distract them from the itch as well. And some people use wet wraps as well. Does that work? So uh, when topical steroids and moisturizers alone don't work, then we have to um, you know, start intensive topical therapy in the form of wet wraps, as you rightly pointed out. Um, but there are also other treatment options available, such as phototherapy, shock causes of oral steroids and immunosuppressants. But these tend to be reserved for more severe cases okay. of eczema. How about clothing, you know, what you wear too, is that a factor? 
rather could aggravate mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. eczema? Mm -hmm. um, I recommend light, breathable, natural materials. So cotton is a good option. Mm -hmm. um, wool, for example, tends to cause a prickly sensation on the skin, and this can cause a child with eczema to feel even worse and to scratch more. In addition, if you can choose soft fabrics um, without tags and uh, which are seamless, these can feel more comfortable on the skin of a child with eczema. Okay, mm. and when kids have eczema, it's, it can be itchy, sensitive, and it's painful as well. So when you want to shower your child or take them to have mm -hmm. a bath, what should you do? It's best to go uh, for soap-free cleansers during a flare-up, and by this there are um, several therapeutic cleansers uh, in the market which you can uh, go for, bath oils especially. Um, it's important to avoid sodium lauryl sulfate, which is a common lathering agent present in soaps, as this can irritate and dry the skin even more. Also, avoid abrasive materials such as um, loofahs or washcloths and um, keep the showers short. Use lukewarm water rather than hot water okay. and uh, pat the skin dry with a soft towel and apply moisturizer liberally when the skin is slightly and, damp. Um, what about shampoo, doctor? Uh, shampoo in a child with eczema uh, can potentially worsen the eczema, especially if it's on the scalp mm. as well. So go for a gentle shampoo. When do you decide that it's, it's reached a situation for a parent to go and see a, a dermatologist? Um, I would say when the itch gets severe enough that it disturbs their activities of daily living. And um, if there is a change in the state of the skin, so if typically they're managing quite well with just moisturizers and then a flare-up occurs, um, the skin when it gets infected, for example, can appear slightly red, there can be pus, um, there can be oozing coming from the skin. Uh, if the child is unwell as well, it's important to seek medical attention immediately. Okay, doctor, very quickly, um, what are the side effects of steroid treatments? Topical steroids are important for reducing inflammation in eczema. However, if they're used inappropriately, uh, they can cause skin thinning, which is cosmetically disfiguring. And um, there's also a phenomenon known as tachyphylaxis, whereby the steroids lose their effects and you have to use stronger steroids instead. Uh, however, if you are um, getting a eczema treated by a qualified medical professional, um, the correct dose, potency, duration and the class of steroid will be given that's appropriate to your child's um, eczema depending on the location, your child's age group um, as well as the severity of eczema. Okay. All right. Thank you very much doctor. Such a pleasure having you, our first guest this year. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, it's my pleasure as well. And that was Dr. Tio Wanlin uh, with some great advice for those of you who have kids with eczema.